I want you to ask yourself a question. In a time where artificial intelligence is at its most advanced, what is it that makes you, you? It's a hard question. The line feels like it's getting a little blurry. And there was one particular thing that we did to stir this pot. Do you want me to add that to your schedule? We gave machines our voice. Then we discovered how important a symbol it is of identity. And now that we share this identity with AI, where does that leave us? I will never be able to shake that voice. Part of my identity was taken away. Well, there's a lot left to answer. The technology is here now, but the lessons to learn are in the 250 years of discovery that brought us to this moment. Because the work of every single scientist in this story, from the first prototypes to the latest models, led to the same conclusion. No matter how far we push, there is something about your voice that no algorithm, no matter how advanced, will ever be able to replicate. And by the end of this video, you'll understand not just how we got here, but exactly what it is that makes your voice and you completely irreplaceable. So let's go back to where it all began. 1769, Vienna. Meet humanity's first detective in our investigation, Wolfgang von Kempelen. He's obsessed with another question from an earlier time. Can we give life to machines? He's building something that the world has never seen before, a machine that can speak. By manipulating airflow through carefully designed chambers, it can reportedly produce short phrases of French, German, and Italian. Let's listen. Okay, that is deeply unsettling. But Kempelin wasn't interested in perfection. He wanted to advance our understanding as far as he could. And so he wrote down everything, all his learnings in the first systematic attempt to reverse engineer the human voice. And even though his work stopped there, it eventually got into the hands of some very interested people. Namely, a young man by the name of Alexander Graham Bell. His exposure to Kempelin's work would inspire him to become the inventor of the technology that connected the world, the telephone. But Bell's legacy didn't end there, because now that he had harnessed the power to transmit voice, he wanted to reproduce it. Well, fast forward 70 years, Murray Hill, New Jersey, 1939. Bell's company became known as AT&T, and the research division, Bell Labs, was about to put on a show. At the center of the excitement is Homer Dudley, a pioneer of speech synthesis. And this is his creation. The voter, revolutionary. For the first time in history, a machine is creating speech from pure electricity, not mechanics. How did he do it? Well, it turns out you can simplify speech into two electrical signals. One of these represents the breath. The other, the vibration of the vocal cord. Armed with a pedal and 15 keys, an operator could play the voter like a piano. Now, this would take months and months of training, but if you got it just right, you'd get this. Whom did she see? She saw me. Imagine hearing that for the first time. No frame of reference for what's possible. Witness accounts describe the reaction as silence, then applause, then disbelief, amazement, skepticism, anxiety. Sound familiar? Back then, it was an understandable reaction for hearing a machine talk for the first time. But the scientific community wasn't satisfied. There was still the human operator. How do you give a machine the ability to produce sound on its own? And in 1961, back in Bell Labs, a computer sang its first love song. The legendary IBM 7094 was programmed not with a personality, but with characteristics that could trick listeners into thinking it had one. Formance, pitch, timing. Researchers John Kelly Jr., Carol Lockbaum, and Max Matthews weren't just creating speech, they were composing it. After this one demonstration, popular culture was changed forever, because now people are latching on to a new idea, the idea of artificial intelligence. It's the most reliable computer ever made. No 9,000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. Let's trace our steps. Kempelen gave machines a mouth. Homer Dudley gave them speech, and John Kelly Jr. and his team gave them the semblance of a personality. The question on people's minds was no longer, could machines talk? It was, could machines feel?
1990s, scientists around the world just asked a revolutionary question. What if we don't just simulate human speech? What if we use it? The breakthrough, concatenative speech synthesis. Record dozens of hours of real human voices, then break the recordings up into tiny pieces. Each one gets manually labeled and stored with relevant information. Spelling, pitch, duration, emphasis. When given text input, a computer would look through the database and stitch the pieces together to say anything. And it worked. The addition of the human factor led to the widespread adoption of this new technology. Next station, doors will open on your left. In 2.4 kilometers, exit right on Lakeshore. Would you like to send that message now? Meet the original voice of Siri, Susan Bennett. She spent hours recording random sentences, never knowing that she'd live in millions of pockets around the world. For the first time, machines didn't just sound like humans. They were built from us. And that's a moment to know. We gave them a part of us along with a blueprint on how to use it. But it was time for someone to show the computer how to do the learning itself. March 2016, Seoul, Korea. AI just beat the world's best Go player, Lee Sedol. A moment of triumph, of fear, of wonder. <laughs> And this moment was brought to us by DeepMind, Google's recently acquired elite AI lab. Headed by some of the most brilliant people on the planet, chess prodigies, humanitarians. Their motto, solve intelligence, then use that to solve everything else. And they were about to revolutionize voice AI. Aaron Van Den Oort had made waves in the scientific community by using neural networks to generate images pixel by pixel. His breakthrough thinking, what if audio could be generated the same way, sample by sample? Boom, WaveNet, a generative model for raw audio. This is a paper that changed the game. We're gonna be reviewing a text-to-speech paper, which name is WaveNet. 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 What is WaveNet? Where previous models predicted speech in chunks, 150 milliseconds at a time, WaveNet would predict every single individual sample at 24,000 samples per second. Listen to the difference. Right now in Mountain View, it's 65 with clear skies. Model, we call it CSM, and that's what we're there's something different here. Synthetic speech now has something that it never had before. Like a person. Breath. Um, it was... Hesitation. It's not just intelligible. It's human. We've traced 250 years of evidence, from mechanical curiosity to electronic breakthrough, from digital emotion to true AI. The question is no longer can machines sound human. The question is, can we tell the difference? I will never be able to shake that voice and the desperate cries for help out of my mind. It's every parent. Phoenix, Arizona, 2023. Jennifer DeStefano receives a call. It's her daughter's voice. The voice was perfect, unmistakably her daughter's. Jennifer was about to hand over a $50,000 ransom, but her daughter was safe the whole time. The entire call was AI generated from clips on her social media. A recorded message sent out yesterday pretended to be President Joe Biden. Electoral sabotage. Robocalls featuring President Biden's voice told voters to stay home. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald mass surveillance. China uses AI voice recognition to identify citizens from phone calls alone. Debates over government surveillance are back in the spotlight after the reports of It makes people wonder, has AI voice weaponized human trust itself? But there's another side to the story. My voice back because almost like a part of my identity was taken away when I lost my voice. August 2023, Lexi Bogan loses her voice to cancer surgery. A story of voice restoration. Using 15 seconds of footage from an old high school video, AI gave Lexi her voice back. Something that you would like if you wanted to use cucumbers. Or how about saving a lost language? In New Zealand, AI was trained on decades of archives to preserve the Maori language. Similar projects are on track to save endangered languages around the world. One could argue that AI voice is a means of healing, preservation, human connection. That it doesn't steal our humanity restores it. But I'm not here to argue its merits or its downfalls. The central question to my investigation was this. In a world that has unleashed the full power of AI, what is it that makes you, you? Let's trace out what we know. 1760s, the first machine is given the mechanics to speak. 1930s, electricity gives it a voice of its own. 1960s, the world listens to the first machine emotion. 
1990s, we give them our own voice. 0.4 kilometers. 2016, the triumph of AI voice. Right now in mountain. And today, it's everywhere. They want it to feel like a real conversation. Each breakthrough was driven by human curiosity, scientific ambition, the desire to understand and to be understood. And through progressive discovery, we learned what it meant to have a voice. AI can predict frequencies, pitch, rhythm, emphasis, even hesitation. But your voice carries one thing that no algorithm will ever be able to touch, your intention. Every scientist, every researcher in our story was a visionary who did everything they could to bridge the gap between us and the machine. Like them, you are not your voice. You are what you choose to do with it. We are the authors of this technology's future. The story of artificial intelligence is really our story. The machines learn to speak by listening to us. Now it's time for us to decide what we want them to say. So I leave you with this question. What will you do with your voice?